Hi everyone, it's Tasman here from Tasman's Crochet Creations and for today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to crochet this cute little two-tone sunflower with a leaf. Um, so yeah, I think this is my favourite version of my sunflower keychain. I really really much like it. Um, my first version was this one here. Um, as you can see this one is a lot more smaller and um, the, the petals curl in and doesn't look as nice as this one does. Um, so I did actually um, adjust the pattern of the sunflower keychain a little bit so that it looks um, a lot more like bigger and also the petals stand out more um, or lay flat more I should say than this one. Um, so yeah the sunflower as I said the petals always uh, used to curl up and yeah doesn't look very nice or professional so yeah I decided to make a little few adjustments to this to the sunflower pattern and also change the center to make it look like a more realistic sunflower which I totally love um yeah I really think this one looks so much better than this one also because it's bigger but because of the two-tone um center there for the sunflower so yeah that's my absolute favorite this one <laughs> It is my absolute favorite, um, but yeah. Um, I'm so happy, guys. Sorry about the mark there. <laughs> um, what do you think of my hair? I love my hair. Um, I got so tired of my frizzy hairstyle and. Um, it was long overdue for a, for a trim, for a haircut. My hair was like sitting like maybe like here, I think maybe. Can't remember, but I think it was like by my bra strap. Um, so it re I really, really needed a trim. And um, my, what would you call it? My spit ends were like always knotting and I was, oh, it was horrible. So I had a Brazilian done to straighten my hair. I think it lasts about like six months, something like that. So I love my new look and guys. I know this may sound funny, but for the first time ever, I was able to wear a crocodile clip. And the first time I got it right, 100%, I put it in perfectly, it sat right on my hair. And I was so excited because with me, my natural frizzy hair, I can't wear a crocodile clip. It literally just falls out of my hair. And yeah, I got so happy about it. But anyway, anyway, we're not here about that. Um... I also just wanted to say that I'm nearly finished with my lectures blanket and I'm so happy with how it it has come out. I need to do one more row because unfortunately it's not the size that it needs to be but it is such a beautiful blanket. I don't even know if I'll be able to get this whole thing in frame. I really don't. But look at how beautiful this blanket is. It is so beautiful. Like, look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? So this is my lecturer's blanket. She asked me to make this for me. For me. For her. What am I talking about? She asked me to make this for her. Um, so it is really, really beautiful. I love the colours. It has come out so beautiful. So yeah, I need to do one more row because it's sadly not the size that it needs to be. And then I need to sew half hexagons or crochet half hexagons and join them on the sides because as you can see these ones are quite floppy. <laughs> the hexagons on the side are quite floppy because it has nothing else to secure it to. So yeah I need to crochet half hexagons and then I need to block this blanket and do a nice, well first I need to do a nice little border and then a nice little pico uh, border to just finish off the blanket but yeah, so I am very, very happy and excited with how this blanket is coming out. But yeah, it's a very big blanket. It's, it's supposed to be 120 by 120. But uh, it's a little bit bigger than 120 by 120. Um, but yeah, anyway, and just one more thing before we go into the tutorial which i'm so super happy and excited about guys i am getting labels made 
um, that has my business name, so it's going to say just Tasman's Crochet Creations in my font and the, my colour scheme. And I'm going to sew it to projects like the blanket, my cardigans, my sweaters, my hats, my beanies, whatever, you name it. Just obviously I can't sew them onto my keychains because they're a bit too small for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm like really super stoked about it. Um, I just want to get a few more quotes from like two companies near me. Um, and then yeah, I'm going to go ahead with, with getting labels made. I am so happy and so excited. And um, my plan is one day to make little notion pouches like these. Or like this one. So just like a little simple pouch, you know, you can put your stuff in. Um, so I want to get um, different types of cotton fabric, um, different types of printed cotton fabric, and I want to sew up my own Notion pouches, um, and I want to sell them on my website. And um, yeah, so I want to sew my labels onto the lining of these bags. Um, well, this is not the one that I've done, but as an example, I want to do one like this, um, with a nice, uh, cotton print. And then sew my label on the inside, and I'm, I'm really, really super excited about this journey, guys. You have no idea. Because for the longest time, um, I wanted to have different Notion pouches for the different projects I have going on. So that I don't have to keep taking crochet hooks from from like this one bag for instance I take it out and use it for another project you know I want all of my notions to be that with that one project so that means having multiple crochet hooks multiple scissors and things like that um and this company that I bought yarn from they also do notion pouches but for a long time they haven't had the granny stitch um or the granny square pattern print Notion pouch bags, which I really wanted to get, but for the lo uh, longest time, they were out of stock of them. So, yeah, I've decided that I'm gonna sew up my own Notion pouches, and um, yeah, I have actually sewn up one before. Um, it was a nice, beautiful sunflower one that's currently at my boyfriend's house because I made it. <laughs> I made it into a second um, Notions bag that has all of my crochet hooks in there and. Uh, a thing of scissors and darning needles and things like that. So if I ever go to my boyfriend's house and crochet, I don't have to take an extra notions pouch and my crochet things. I can just take my yarn and just go there. But yeah, I haven't had to use that in a long time. Um, <laughs> I've become very comfortable with the hooks that I use here at home. So I just take that with, with me there. But anyway, that was a very, very long intro. I... I'm just so excited about all of the things that are happening, all of the things that are coming true, or all of the things that, I don't know, I'm just so happy to announce these changes that are coming. I'm so excited for my website, I can't wait till I have my website and to sell patterns online and, and to sell my crochet products, I really can't wait for this dream to come true but anyway it's enough of this let's jump ahead to the materials shall we okay guys um so for the material to make this beautiful sunflower keychain don't you just love the two-tone because i really do i think it really makes makes it a sunflower you know but anyway um so as for the materials um i'll be using charity double knit uh pull skein uh, so this brand of yarn, and um, all of the yarns here are the same brand, and um, it is 100% acrylic, it is 233 meters, or approximately 256 yards, it is 100, gram, 100 grams, and it recommends a 4 millimeter crochet hook, or um, 3.75 to 4.5 millimeter knitting needles, and um, this is the color bright yellow. Yeah, so we'll need some bright yellow, and then I also have some cocoa brown here. Um, so it's like this nice dark, like chocolatey brown. And then I also have camel brown. We have camel brown, and then we have some tiger lamb or lamb drop. 
can't remember the exact name of this yarn. It's either Tagalam or Lam Drop. I think it's Tagalam. Uh, so Tagalam Green. Okay, we'll be needing a 2mm crochet hook. So I just use a 2mm crochet hook because I love to get my stitches nice and tight. Um, so yeah, I use a 2mm crochet hook. You'll be needing a pair of scissors. You'll be needing a darning needle or tapestry needle. And you'll be needing a stitch marker. This is one that my 3D that my brother 3D printed for me. And um, yeah, I'll also be selling these on my website as well as the little keychain that you saw in my notions bag. Um, so yeah, you'll also be needing two jump rings. One jump ring to connect the leaf onto the sunflower, and then the other jump ring is to connect the, the keychain onto the sunflower. Then you'll be needing a blunt pair of scissors to push. Um, some stuffing into the sunflower and then you'll also be needing some jewelry pliers so that you can close the jump ring for the keychain okay so that is um, all that we need um, for this tutorial so let's get started all right so to get started we're going to take our camel brown and i need to find my end here we go so we're going to take some of our camel brown and um, we're going to start crocheting um, the center of our sunflower. So what you want to do is you want to take your yarn and your tail end. You're going to place it like this over your um, two fingers like this. And then you're going to hold that yarn with your thumb. And then you're going to take your working yarn, this, this one that's attached to the, the ball of yarn. And you're going to wrap it around your fingers once twice and then the third time you're going to cross it over to form an x okay so there's your x and then you're going to take your crochet hook let me just zoom in a bit here you're going to take your crochet hook you're going to insert underneath those two front loops and then you're going to yarn over and pull that through and under those two loops then you're going to do a chain one so you're going to yarn over and pull through that loop on your hook to do a chain one to secure your magic ring and then you're going to take it off your fingers you're going to take it off of your fingers oopsie sorry and then we're going to place six single crochets into the magic ring so to do a single crochet you will insert into the center this magic ring sorry my camera is out of focus here there we go and then you're going to yarn over Pull through and then yarn over and pull through those two loops to do your single crochet again it is insert yarn over pull through yarn over and then pull through two to finish off your single crochet so that's two three four five six Sorry, why am I doing seven? Six. Okay, so I've done six now. And the way we count is at the top of the stitches here. Um, so you'll see these Vs. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so we have six. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take our tail end. And we're going to pull in. We're going to pull in our tail end. And you can see one of these little loops is closing in. So we'll take that loop that has been pulled in and we'll pull it out, but we'll pull it down towards us, towards ourselves. And then you can see now that this other loop is closing up. Okay, so now once that is closed, to get rid of this loop now, you're going to take your tail end and pull on it. can be a little bit tight, but you're going to pull on it. And then there you go. Your two loops have disappeared and I have a nice long tail end that we will work in. Alright, so now what we're going to do is we're going to find our first single crochet, which is this one here. So we're going to insert into that one there and we are going to do a an increase. Okay, so I'm going to put my, my yarn over my hook to work over it. Okay, so I'm going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through two to do your single crochet then you can take your stitch marker 
and insert your stitch marker into that first stitch that you did. Okay, so we'll be working in a continuous round. Okay, so that's one single crochet. We need to do two more in there. Sorry, one more in there. So we have two single crochets in that first stitch. Okay, so we'll be placing two single crochets into each stitch around. Okay, so we're going to go into the next stitch and we're going to place two single crochets in there. And then into the next stitch, we're going to place two single crochets in there. And our stitch count by the end of this round should have increased. So we would have gone up from 6 up to 12 by the end of this round. Because we started with six single crochets into the magic ring. Um, so with us doing two, two single crochets into each stitch, we should have a total of 12 stitches by the end of this round. So we have, we can count our stitches, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 where the stitch marker is. Okay, so now moving to the next round, we'll remove our stitch marker, and then we'll place one single crochet into the first stitch. Okay, and then we can insert our stitch marker back. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get these things in sometimes. There we go. Okay, so we've placed one single crochet into that first stitch. And then into the next stitch we'll do another increase. So that's one, two single crochets into the same stitch. And then again, we'll place one single crochet in the next stitch. And then an increase in the following stitch. And your stitch count should have gone up from... From 12 up to 18 by the end of that round so that is the repeat for this pattern you will place one single crochet into the next stitch and then two single crochets into the next stitch You'll just repeat that around and your increases should line up. Your increases should be on top of each other. From round to round your increases should be on top of each other. Okay, so there we go. That is what it should be looking like now. Okay, so now once we've completed three rounds of our camel brown we will we will remove our stitch marker okay and then we will slip stitch to this next stitch so i'm going to lift up my my working yarn i'm going to insert my my hook into that next stitch and then i'm going to insert this loop onto my crochet hook and then i pull tight to close up that working loop and then pull that through yeah, so that's what it looks like. And then we can grab our scissors and then we can leave a little bit of a tail end and just snip off and just snip off that yarn and then you're just gonna pull up. Okay, so there we go. There is our little um, camel brown center. And then we can get rid of this camel brown and then we can bring our cocoa brown okay and then into the same stitch that we slip stitched into we are going to insert our yarn gonna wrap it around our hook and bring it through and then we're gonna do a chain one just to secure that so a chain one is you're just gonna yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook to do a chain one this chain one does not count as a stitch, it just acts as leverage. Okay, and then we're going to place one single crochet. Uh, we're going to place one single crochet into the next two stitches. So that's one, two, oopsie. My yarn is busy splitting. <laughs> okay, so that's one, 
and two and then we will increase into the next stitch okay and then I'm going to place my stitch marker back into the first stitch even though we can see which one is our first stitch I'm still going to place my stitch marker into that first stitch come on there your little stitch marker go in There we go. Okay, let me just grab some more yarn here. Okay, so we are just going to repeat this pattern all the way around, placing one single crochet into the next two stitches and then an increase into the next. And our stitch count should have gone up from 18 to 24 by the end of this round. As you can see all of our increases line up so if I just had to pull out my hook a little bit here see there how all of the increases line up they're all on top of each other okay so I'm doing my last set of stitches here so place once in crochet into the next two stitches and then an increase into the last stitch And then we will continue to work in the round so we will remove our stitch marker and then insert a single crochet into that first stitch and then place our stitch marker back okay and again by the end of that last round your stitch count should have gone up from 18 up to 24 by the end of this this first round that we did in the dark brown okay so now moving on to the next round We'll place one single crochet into the next three. So that's one, two, three, and then we'll do an increase into the next stitch. And that is the repeat pattern for this, this round. So we'll place one single crochet into the next three, one, two, three, and then an increase. And your stitch count should have gone up from 24 um, to 30 by the end of this round. to do our last round in black sorry not in black in brown in this dark brown so I'm going to remove my stitch marker and then we're going to place one single crochet into that first stitch and then place our stitch marker back and then one single crochet into the next four stitches and then an increase into the next Okay, yeah, so I've placed one single crochet into the next four, and then we are going to, to do an increase into that next stitch. 
and then we'll just repeat this around placing one single crochet into the next four one two three four and then an increase and then we'll just repeat that around and your stitch count should have gone up from 30 up to 36 by the end of this round So now I've just placed my last increase and again your stitch count should have gone up from from 30 up to 36 by the end of this round. Okay, so this is what it should be looking like now. So now we are going to end off our center of our sunflower so we can remove our stitch marker. And again, I'm just going to pull up um, my working yarn there, insert my crochet hook into that next stitch, put the working loop on my crochet hook, pull that tight. And then I'm going to pull that through and then I'm going to take my scissors and snip a little bit of a tail and then I'm gonna do a chain one basically so I'm gonna um, take my yarn yarn over and pull through and then pull up okay so that is what our sense of our sunflower looks like so you can just go off and repeat the same steps to do um, another one exactly like this and then I'll come back and I'll show you what we can do um, what we will do to do the petals okay okay so now after you have completed crocheting um, your two center pieces this is what they should be looking like now so what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, our center pieces and we can leave our tail ends um, as they are we'll tuck them into the work so what we'll do is we'll put wrong sides together um with the um with the slip stitches um with the slip stitches lining up so what we'll do is we will leave these tail ends as they are we will insert our crochet hook into the stitch that we slip stitched into on this one and then into the stitch that we slip stitched into onto this other one so with the wrong sides together and with the right sides outwards okay so this is the wrong side where it's all bumpy and textured and then the nice smooth side is on the outside okay so we'll place again the wrong sides together with the slip stitches um together and then we can take our yellow yarn so let me just get that out quickly we can take our yellow yarn eh, which one's the other end <laughs> okay there we go okay so we can take our yellow and then we're going to lay it over our hook let me just zoom in here so you're going to um lay our yellow yellow yarn can't get my words out okay so we are going to take our yellow yarn and we're going to wrap it around our crochet hook okay then we're going to yarn over pull through both layers oopsie pull through both layers and then we're going to do a chain one so let me just do that again so you're going to yarn over pull through and we are going to chain up four okay so now we have pulled it through let me just get my camera to focus okay there we go and then we're going to yarn over pull through that's chain one yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through three yarn over pull through four okay so we're going to chain four and then we're going to do a treble so we're going to yarn over um two times to do a treble and then into this next stitch so we'll insert, insert our hook into the next stitch and then into the next stitch onto the other side and then we can carry our 
tail end. We're going to yarn over, pull through, then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. Okay, so do your treble. And then we're going to do a double treble, so that's wrapping the yarn over the hook once, twice, and then three times. And then we are going to insert our hook into the same stitch that we just came out of. Going to yarn over, pull through, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so we have our chain four into this first stitch, then we have our treble and double treble into the next stitch. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a pico now. So to do a pico, you're going to chain three, so that's one, two, and a three. And then we're going to slip stitch, slip stitch into the top of our double treble. So what I like to do is go into the front, the front uh, loop of this double treble here, and then go into the side loop of the double treble. So that's kind of what it looks like. And then you're going to slip stitch. So you're going to yarn over, and what I like to do to slip stitch is I, I like to twist my hook down. I like to twist my hook down, and then I'm going to pull through that that stitch and then pull through the loop on your hook to do your uh, your slip stitch and then what we're going to do is we're going to be doing another um, another tr uh, treble crochet so we're going to yarn over twice so you're going to yarn over twice and then insert into the same stitch we came out of you're going to yarn over pull through and then you're going to yarn over pull through two and then yarn over see and then you're going to yarn over and pull through two again and then yarn over pull through two again okay then you're going to chain four one two three and four and then into the next stitch you're going to slip stitch so you're going to insert your hook into the next stitch through both sides then you're going to yarn over pull through and then pull through that loop on your hook to do a slip stitch Okay, so that's the first petal, and then we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, so we're going to go over into the next stitch, front and back of the center, then you're going to yarn over, pull through, and then pull through that loop on your hook to do a slip stitch. And then you're going to repeat the process again, you're going to chain four, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to do a treble, so it's one, two, you're going to yarn over twice, and then insert into the next stitch through the front and back of the center then you're going to yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two okay so that's the treble then we'll do a double treble so we will yarn over three times so that's one two three then we'll go into the same stitch we previously did our treble tri treble crochet then we're going to yarn over pull through then we're going to yarn over pull through two Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Yeah. And then we're going to do our pico, so it's chain three, one, two, three, and then slip stitch to the top of our double treble. So you're going to go into the front, the uh, front loop of the double treble and the side loop of the double treble. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops to do your slip stitch and then you're going to do your treble so wrap your yarn around your hook twice and send into the same stitch yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two and then we're going to chain four again one two three and four slip stitch into the next stitch into the next stitch yarn over pull through and then pull through that loop on your hook to do a slip stitch and again into the next stitch we will slip stitch okay let me do that again okay so into the next stitch we will slip stitch okay so now that is what our petals should be looking like now Okay, and you'll just repeat that around, making sure you do two slip stitches in between each petal. So I'm going to quickly go through that again with you. 
So we'll chain four. One, one, two, three, four. And then treble. So we're going to chain, uh, we're going to yarn over three times. One, sorry, two times. For a treble, we're going to yarn over twice. Insert into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. And then we'll do a double treble. So yarn over three times. Go into the same stitch. Let me do that again. Going into the same stitch, you're going to do your treble, so yarn over twice, yarn over twice. Okay, so you're going to yarn over three times, then you're going to insert into the same stitch. You're going to yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And then you're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then slip stitch at the base of those chain threes. And then you're going to do your treble. So yarn over twice. Insert into the same stitch. Uh, yarn over, pull through. Then yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And yarn over, pull through two. And then you're going to chain four again. One, two, three, and four. And then your slip stitch into the next stitch. So sometimes you might have to like move your stitches over. To make sure you're getting into the stitch that you need, you need to go into. Okay, and then you're going to, again, you're going to chain four, three, four, and then do your treble. Then your double treble. And then your pico. So we're going to chain three. One, two, three. Slip stitch at the base. And then do your treble. And then you're going to chain four. And then slip stitch to the next stitch. And then into the next stitch over. Sorry, I think I slip stitched into the front only. One, two, three, four. So yeah, you have to make sure that you are going through both the front and the back center. And then slip stitch into the next stitch. There we go. And then you just repeat that process all the way around and we will leave a little gap uh, we will leave a little bit of a gap um, around the side here so that we can stuff our sunflower so yeah you can go off and repeat that all the way around leaving a little gap on the side so we can stuff our so we can stuff the center of our sunflower okay so i'll meet back up with you when we are ready to stuff Okay, so now I am back and um, I've crocheted all the way around doing um, all of my petals. So now what we are going to do is we are now going to stuff our sunflower. So let me just zoom out a little bit here. So we're just going to grab our stuffing. And you'll need a blunt pair of scissors just to push down um, your stuffing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to open up our sunflower. And what I've done is I have actually pushed my tail ends into my the center of my sunflower um so yeah just so that we can hide those tail ends and um yeah it's easier than weaving them in, in my opinion <laughs> okay so we're just going to take some of our stuffing we're going to lay it kind of like on top of the opening and then we're just going to push down with the scissors so we're just going to push the stuffing down into the sunflower you don't really need like a lot of stuffing. It doesn't have to be stuffed to the max, but it's just 
just a little bit of stuffing in there just to give the sensor some volume. Okay, let me just grab my other sunflower for reference. Okay, so it looks like it is somewhat the same. Let me just add just maybe a little bit more. Had some stuffing there, but oh well, whatever. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to grab some more and just stuff it in here. Okay, I think that is fine. So once you've stuffed it, we can continue doing our petals. Okay, so we can continue doing our petals. So I just slip stitched twice and I'm going to chain four, three and four. Then we're going to do our treble into the next stitch and you just want to make sure you don't catch any of that stuffing so i just kind of have my finger pushing pushing it down and then i'm going to do our treble and then yarn over three times for our double treble and then chain three and then do our pico and then do our treble and then chain four one two three and four and then slip stitch see and then slip stitch into the next two stitches that's one and then that's two one and two and then again I'm gonna chain up four and then into the next stitch we are going to do our treble treble then our double treble And then I'll chain three. One, two, three. And then slip stitch. And then we'll do our treble. And then we can slip stitch into the next, onto our last stitch. We'll slip stitch. Oh, wait, my bad. I forgot to chain four. Okay, so do our treble and then chain four. And then slip stitch into our last stitch and then we can just slip stitch into our beginning stitch that we did over here so just slip stitch in there and then there we go there is our little sunflower So yeah, I feel that definitely with doing a chain 4 instead of a chain 3, I feel that it definitely does make this, the petals lay flat a bit more. So I'm just going to snip my yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail to weave in. I'm just going to yarn over and pull that through. Okay, and then there we go. There is our little sunflower. Yeah, so there's our little sunflower. And then what we can do now is we can just take our our darning needle. So we can just take our darning needle and our tail end. And then we can just insert it into the stitch we came out of and then out somewhere else on the sunflower. Whoopsie. Let me just do that again. Okay, then you're going to sew down into the stitch you came out of and then come out somewhere else on the sunflower. And then again insert the needle you came out of and then out somewhere else on the sunflower. Insert your needle into the stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else on the sunflower. 
and switch your needle into the same stitch you came out of and then out somewhere else on the sunflower okay so this is just so that we can weave in our tail end and um not have it come out so there we go and what we can do we can just pull that up a little bit and then snip close to the sunflower careful not to cut any of your stitches and then there's our little sunflower and i just want to trim this tail end at the back here yeah so that's the back of the sunflower and then this is the front of the sunflower isn't it beautiful <laughs> okay so now we need to crochet the leaf um so yeah we can put our little sunflower aside and then we can get our green yarn okay so we can get our green yarn got little bits and bobs of just lying everywhere okay so we can grab our green okay and then we can make our we can make our leaf so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our yarn okay we're gonna take our yarn and then we're going to wrap it around our fingers once and then the second time we are going to cross over okay so just wrapping the yarn around our fingers twice and then doing a crossover on the second one very similar to the magic ring but very very different at the same time okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert underneath our front loop and pick up the second loop and then we're gonna take our working yarn and our tail end off our fingers so it looks like that then you're just gonna pull tight and there you go you've made your slip knot okay so that's how you make a slip knot okay so now what we're going to do is we are going to chain 15 we're going to chain 15 chains let me just get my pattern back out here okay there we go so there's my pattern okay so we're going to chain 15 so we're going to yarn over and pull through that's one yarn over pull through that's two yarn over pull through that's three yarn over pull through that's four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen and fifteen okay so there we go we have 15 chains and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn our chain over to reveal these back bumps as you can see there so let me just zoom in just a little bit more so that you can see these little back bumps so that is where we'll be working into into those little back bumps of the chain so there's little bumps that you see there sticking out then we're going to work into those things okay so we're going to do five treble so we're going to do five treble crochets into the sixth chain from hook so if you remember a treble is yarn over twice so we're going to yarn over twice and we're going to count our five chains so counting these back loops that is one two three four five and then in the sixth one so in this one here where my thumb is we're going to insert our hook into there so let's just count again so that's one two three four five and six okay so we're going to insert into the back bump there we're going to yarn over pull through then we're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two so that's our first one and we need to do five more so we're going to yarn over twice insert into the same chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over yarn over and pull through two so that's one so that's two three four and five okay so we have five let's count that it let's count my stitches just to make sure so we have our chain here and then we have one two three four and five okay yeah so we have enough then we're going to do one treble into the next three chains so into this next 
three chains so that's one two and three into those next three chains we're gonna do a treble so the same stitch that we have been doing we're gonna yarn over twice insert into that next chain to the back bump of that chain we're gonna yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and oopsie and yarn over pull through two okay again you're gonna yarn over twice so into the next chain space you're gonna yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to yarn over twice, insert into the next chain, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so, so far you should have five trebles into the same chain space, and you should have three trebles into the next three chains. Okay, and then we are going to do one double crochet into the next two stitches. So to do a double crochet, you're going to yarn over once, insert into the next stitch you're going to insert into the next chain sorry you're going to yarn over pull through you're going to yarn over pull through two and then yarn over pull through two to do your double crochet so that's the first one then we're going to yarn over insert into the next chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two and then we're going to do one half double crochet into the next two stitches into the next two chains so half double crochet is yarn over insert into the next chain then you're going to yarn over pull through and then yarn over and pull through all three of these loops on your hook again you're going to yarn over insert into the next chain yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through those three loops to do um your two half double crochet your one half double crochet and then we are going to single crochet into the next chain so a single crochet is insert, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through two. And then into the last stitch, we will slip stitch. So going underneath that back loop of that last stitch, we're going to yarn over, pull through that chain, and then pull through the loop on your hook to do your slip stitch. And then we are going to do a, basically a pico on the end. So we'll chain three. One, two, and three, and then we'll slip stitch into the same stitch that we slip stitched into okay and then working over your tail end you're just gonna um, work that in so you're gonna just place it next to your work and then into the next stitch we are basically going to repeat what we've done on this side now on this other side of the chains okay so into the next stitch so not this one that we just worked into this next one we are going to do one single crochet and then we're going to do one half double crochet in the next two. So it's yarn over, insert into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through those three loops. And then we're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through those three loops. So that's our two half double crochets done. And then we're going to do our two, we're going to do a double crochet in the next two chains. So we're going to yarn over again, we're going to yarn over. Insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. One more time, we're going to yarn over, insert into the next chain, and then yarn over, pull through, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through two. And then there's our two double crochets. And then we're going to do our three, and we're going to do a treble into the next three stitches. So treble is yarn over twice, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two. Sorry, let me do that again. We're going to yarn over twice, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Again, we're going to yarn over two times, insert into the next chain, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two then again we're going to chain so we're going to yarn over twice so into the next chain yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two okay and now into this last chain we are now going to place five trebles into the last chain like what we did before so yarn over twice and insert yarn over pull through Pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. 
So that's one, two, oopsie, one, two, three, four, and five. Yeah, so there we go. There is what our leaf should be looking like now. Okay, and then what we will do is we will slip stitch to the first, to the top of our um, chain five. I think it was chain five. <laughs> so we'll slip stitch to the top. So there is our first um, treble. So we'll find the top of our chain and insert and so that stitch then we're going to yarn over and pull that through to do your slip stitch okay so that is what our leaf should be looking like and then we can just grab our scissors we can snip a little bit of a tail end not too long and then just going to yarn over and pull that through okay so there is our little leaf isn't it cute okay so that's our little leaf yeah, so now what we can do is we can just sew in our tail end. We can snip off this other one because we worked that in. If you haven't worked that in, you need to sew that in. Um, so yeah, I've just snipped that off because I had worked over it. And then you're just going to take your darning needle and thread your darning needle. And then I like to turn my work to the back and then just go into the top of that stitch and then through the side of the stitch here and then i like to just sew down into the leaf making sure you don't see the, the needle through the front and then you're just gonna pull that through okay and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna sew um weave in our tail end underneath some of these stitches making sure that your needle is not showing through the other side because if it does show through like that then you are sewing through the right side of the leaf and we don't want that okay so you're just going to sew under some stitches here and what i like to do is i like to insert my needle through the other side going under some of these stitches going under some of these stitches because my tail end is a bit short now so and then I'm just gonna grab my tail end and just feed that through my needle and just pull that through okay so there we go there is our leaf then we can take our scissors and just snip close to the leaf making sure not to cut your stitches and then there's our little leaf and then we can bring back our sunflower and our leaf. And now the last thing that we need to do is just put our keychain on and then we're basically done. So we can grab our keychain and our two jump rings. Okay, so there we go. And then we can grab our jewelry pliers. Okay, so here's our jewelry pliers. So what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our jump rings, insert that onto our jewelry pliers like that. So we can get a grip on it so let me just zoom in a little bit here so what i'm going to do is i like to just insert my jump ring into the leaf so into the top of my chain there i just want to insert it there actually i think i'm going to insert it into my double treble stitch because i feel like that is more so the center so what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert it through the front to the back. This can be a little bit tricky, so okay, let me do it this way. So what I want to essentially do is insert this needle. You see this, um, this like bar here. Let me just drop this for a minute. So you see, come on jewelry pliers, work with me. So you see this like little vertical bar there, or that like, little bar that goes off to the side there? It looks like a little V there. So I want to insert the, the jump ring just under there, just so that um, it catches this like 
the top stitch and this underneath part of the stitch just so that it's like secure because I don't want this leaf to break or the jump ring to break off of the leaf at any stage so I'm just going to turn to the back so as you can see there there is where I want to place the jump ring just there so I'm just gonna push that through and then there we go yeah it should go through just like that I think I actually want it to come out like there nope not like that like that okay like that all right so we've got our jump ring on our leaf and then we can get our sunflower and we can place our jump ring on our sunflower so you're just going to put the jump ring on your jewelry pliers like that and then you can open up the petals like that just in between the two petals and then we're just going to insert this jump ring into uh, the stitches there see can be a little bit fiddly I think I want it a little bit over. I think I want it into the next stitch. Okay, so let me maybe insert it from the front rather. Eh, come on, little sunflower, work with me. Okay, so I'm just going to insert it from the front to the back of where I want it to go. So, um, in the middle of the two sunflowers, uh, sorry, into the, in between the two petals like that. And then what we can do is we can grab our keychain. You can open up the petals here and then we can just put this last like chain of the keychain um you can just insert that onto the jump ring and then we can take our jewelry pliers and close the jump ring can be a little bit tricky to do this yeah so you're just gonna close the jump ring there we go and squish it a little bit just so that it doesn't come undone there we go so there is the keychain on our sunflower okay and then we are going to take our leaf with the jump ring and then we're going to insert this onto this top whoopsie we're going to insert this onto the top jump ring of the keychain like that okay so it must look like that and then we can now close up this jump ring too okay so there we go there is our little sunflower and leaf keychain isn't that just beautiful let me zoom out here there we go there is our sunflower keychain and then there it is with the with its friend not really its friend but <laughs> yeah so there is the two sunflowers isn't it beautiful i think it is beautiful i think it is really really beautiful so yeah that is the tutorial on how to crochet this cute beautiful two-tone sunflower i really hope you enjoyed watching how to crochet this cute little sunflower and yeah, the adjustments that I made was instead of chaining three for the petals, I chained four. And also chained one extra chain for the leaf because um, my previous sunflower, where are you? You see how it kind of like curves a little bit. So I didn't want my leaf to curve. I wanted, I wanted my leaf to like sit flat. So that is why I had chained 15 instead of 14. So, yeah. Okay, guys. So, that is it for today's tutorial on how to crochet this cute little two-tone sunflower keychain with the leaf. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed watching how to crochet this cute little sunflower keychain. And I would love to see your creations. You can tag me on Instagram and Facebook. You can tag me at Tasman's Crochet Creations. I would love to see your creations and um, how your sunflowers come out. And do you actually know that there's a lot of variations for sunflowers? There's not just yellow sunflowers, there's like blue sunflowers, there's purple sunflowers, there's pink sunflowers. It's pretty cool. So yeah, imagine making different colored sunflowers. 
um but yeah anyways um i hope you guys enjoyed watching hana crocheted this cute little sunflower keychain and um yeah please like comment and subscribe i really appreciate it and it really helps out my channel and um yeah thank you guys for watching and happy crocheting bye guys